All right, gang. Let's take a breather. a deer up there. Maybe I can bag it. Then we'll have something decent to eat instead of that fair pie. It's called Jin Sung. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you can eat it. I'll catch up to you later. I'm going to take a look over that ridge. I'll bet that's where the caves are. Rest easy, gang. Tom's an experienced woodsman, but he's probably strayed a bit too far and decided to spend the night before returning. No doubt, right at this very moment, he's warming his toes over a fire in some makeshift hut, <laughs> completely unaware that we've spent five solid hours looking for him. It's <laughs> so like Tom to pull a stunt like this. Yeah, come on, man. If he's such an experienced woodsman, how come he's lost? I just know he's injured, or, or maybe even... I hope I didn't startle you. It's an old woodsman's trick to fire off the rifle. Twice every 30 minutes is a homing signal to a lost party. I suggest we keep it up all night. Anybody up to it? Well, I'll take over after you. I'll follow you, Keith. Now, we'll need a third. How about you, Karen? I'll stand to watch. 
Then you're in no condition. It's bed for you. Karen, what about it? I'll do it. Fine. Keith, you take 12 to 2. I'll take 2 to 4. Karen, you take 4 to 6. Now mind, we're all up by 6. We've got to resume the search in case Tom should fail to return. Yes, I only slept. Have some coffee. Just couldn't sleep. Every time I drift off, I'd hear those gunshots. Anywhere to town? Still early. Are you and uh, Tom good friends? Oh, I'd like to think so. You know, he has his eye out for a lot of girls. I can't imagine that with a girl as lovely as you are. Uh... People say I have a good sense of humor. Uh-huh. Is that all they say? Oh, please, Dr. Wynn, I can't see anything without my glasses. Are you and Dr. Prowl old friends? Friends, but not old. We met a few years ago at a faculty convention. We share a number of scholarly interests, although his enthusiasm about the Yeti far out distance is my own. I say if there are such creatures, leave them alone. They obviously don't enjoy human contact, so why harass them? Dr. Prell, of course, is intent on capturing one of the beasts and finally proving that such creatures do exist. My own vice is the North American flora, herbs in particular. Lately, those traditionally found in the Indian medicine man's bag. Strangely enough, the Yeti crosses both of our paths. It's deeply rooted in Indian folklore. Do you remember me mentioning Laughing Crow's accident? Yes, Karen and I were dying to ask you what happened. Yes, well, it happened seven or eight years. Laughing Crow, sit down. It's all right. Sit down. It happened seven or eight years ago when we were still living on the reservation. He claims he was attacked by a half-human, half-animal beast that carried him off to its cave, intending to use him as food at the proper moment, expecting to be devoured. At any time, he escaped on the third night and wandered through the woods for two weeks until he found his way back to the reservation. Unfortunately, his tribe does not believe in the Yeti. And after severely beating him and cutting his tongue muscle, they cast him out. So you see, he hasn't spoken a word since. Oh my God. Kara, check out the ruins down by the quarry. Keith, you stand guard here.
want to go? It's I... awfully cold out there. I've got to get some air. I mean, I just don't feel right standing around doing nothing. Well, stick close to the house. I wouldn't go into the woods alone if I were you. I won't. I just want to take a walk around the place. All right. There, that's better. It's his leg, it's his leg! 